So, good morning and a very warm welcome to you all to the UBC Cultural Cities Commission webinar, Pandemic and Border Closures, How to Sustain Cultural Exchange. My name is Irene Pendolin and I'm a an UBC's Communications Manager and I will be the technical support for this webinar. The moderator of the webinar is Ruta Stepanovaite, Chair of the UBC Cultural Cities Commission. Now, first of all, some basic webinar instructions. Please keep your microphone muted all the time unless you are speaking or presenting. And you can write comments and questions in the chat field. The moderator will check the chat and pick up questions from the chat after the presentations. After the presentations, you can also raise your hand by clicking the field participants down at the bottom of the screen and then click the box beside your name in the participant list. Now, sometimes there have been news of video meetings that have been intruded by outside actors, so-called hackers. And if this would happen during our webinar, which we are not expecting to, but just a precaution, then we will end this meeting and you will immediately receive a new link to a Teams meeting in your email, which you can then, then join. So this is just a precaution. I'm, I'm sure everything will go smoothly today. But enough with the technics and, and let's get to business. So I'm glad to give the virtual floor to Ruta Stepanovaite, Chair of the UBC Cultural Cities Commission and the moderator of this webinar. Good morning to you all, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, I have a big pleasure today to open a second event in a series of online meetings presented by the UBC Cultural Cities Commission. And uh, as already Irene uh, kindly presented, the uh, topic of this meeting is pandemic and border closures and how to sustain cultural exchange. Um, so the main goal of this cycle of event, online events is to create a space for open discussion and also share knowledge and know-how or simply inspiring. So it is also, a, I see it also as an informal space uh, to meet and all together try to agree on what in a time of pandemic and crisis alike matters most and why. Uh, so uh, today I would like to announce that there are slight changes in our program. Uh, we have uh, Aiste Ulube uh, with us uh, live and also uh, Marcus Hageman. Uh, will not be able to attend our meeting live because of some uh, internet connection problems. But uh, these challenges are really not very new uh, to us during this uh, quarantine period. So we still managed to have a phone call interview. So uh, today I will present it to you. And also the experiences of uh, participating in the project named ABCD. Uh, also, uh, we have one more uh, new presenter uh, that joined us uh, today. It's Anton Zaitsev, and he today will announce uh, an open call and invitation to the colleagues uh, willing to join the uh, Clean Games Baltic Cup in 2022. Uh, so, getting deeper into the uh, topic, uh, cultural mobility uh, is a phenomenon that, according to various researchers, creates new narratives, also a sense of rootedness, and a space for exchanging cultural goods. So, uh, in practice, cultural mobility contributes to a responsible and sustainable transformation of society and its members, uh, who are a part of different communities. And today, I would like to open a talk uh, on a topic regarding uh, threats of the self-isolation of countries that we are facing uh, recently uh, in the face of a quarantine and how does it affect various communities from the profession professional ones uh, and to those who share common cultural social or even political identities it is also a time to talk about new notion of a cultural mobility and a cultural exchange in time of the border closures. So the certain questions arise. What specific formats of communication and cooperation are to be used further? And also, is there a need for creating new measures or is it that we do not take an advantage of already existing ones? And today's speakers are colleagues working on developing and sustaining culture on very different levels. So uh, I would like to give a floor to Aiste Lupe, who is a co-founder of Arts Agency Artscape, also a board member of Association of Cultural Managers in Lithuania, and the owner, uh, 
fresh owner of a social business based on Amos, it's a food house. So Artscape agency has a strong focus uh, working with refugee community and ethnic minorities living in Lithuania through cultural participation. So please, Aiste, the floor is yours. And uh, after the presentation, there will be some time uh, for comments and questions. So everyone is really uh, free to post your comments in the comment section and I will be happy to moderate the questions or comments. Uh, thank you, Ruta. Before starting my presentation, I would like to say thank you for organizing and uh, organizers and Ruta Stepanoveta for uh, inviting me and uh, giving a chance to share my experience and perspectives. I'm also very excited to hear our speakers and meet you all in the discussion. I will then start sharing my screen. Mm -hmm. Yes, okay. So today I will be telling you uh, what was happening on the ground during the pandemic with one of the communities arts agency Artscape has been working, uh, refugees and asylum seekers. And hopefully describe to you the work that we are doing as a response to pandemic. Uh, before going into the problems that disadvantaged communities are facing during the COVID, uh, I have to mention that these problems are not new and uh, is not only caused by sol solely of a pandemic lack of opportunities for infrastructure has been already there, but uh, recent crisis, of course, made it a CA these inequities even more clear than ever. And um, Artscape is a performing arts uh, agency uh, based in Vilnius, Lithuania. We are implementing artistic projects with ethnic minorities, refugees, and other disadvantaged groups, bringing uh, inclusive theater methodologies to the people, offering education, training for Lithuanian art practitioners, and applying theater and other creative methodologies into non-formal uh, uh, training. Since 2015, Artscape is working with refugees and migrants in Lithuania, and we immediately saw that this target group is taking first hits uh, just after quarantine was uh, announced. So our first efforts were to support and reach newcomers, the asylum seekers and refugees who are living in refugee centers, and who and another group who has recently moved in municipalities, municipalities as the uh, most uh, vulnerable groups. Uh, the problems uh, they were facing, um, first of all, are connected with facilities, which are overcrowded, and uh, it's uh, truly impossible to keep social distancing, uh, distancing because people are living in com uh, in uh, common rooms, using uh, common showers, uh, and so on. So fear to get infected uh, was very present in facilities. And uh, having that in mind, government locked closed facilities down. And that meant that not only newcomers were living in these conditions, but that NGOs or other outsiders were not able to have access to the target group. So uh, we had to stop uh, all, uh, all uh, activities we were doing. And also it meant that uh, people who are living in the centers were not allowed to go out of territories. So that caused second problem, extreme social isolation and lo lo loss of social contacts. And for migrants, uh, living in centers as well as in municipalities, social contacts is an essential as uh, they often do not have any links to local community, have no family here and starting their life from scratch. Another important thing to have in mind is that uh, at the time all integration processes and asylum procedures had stopped. Uh, include this, including things like uh, language lessons, social services, seeking employment, housing, and seeking asylum. So 
on uh, also government institutions, also NGOs working with this target group had no possibility to have meetings, organize events or provide aid. Uh, so as a response and solution to uh, things happening, uh, we started a stream, which is online activities and it initi initiatives that give started. And it's a platform and uh, collaboration with art, pr art practitioners and volunteers that help refugees and asylum seekers to fight against negative consequences of COVID-19. And in stream, Artscape is working with at least 30 of art, artistic practitioners, volunteers, including those with refugee backgrounds, to increase opportunities and creative pathways for people to participate in the culture. In stream, volunteers are facilitating workshops and online events, including vocational training and formal activities, events like theater performances, and uh, many others. Uh, after announcing that we are going to do stream for the newcomers, uh, for refugees, asylum seekers, we were really moved by the response from artistic community and also uh, people outside of culture who understood the issue and the urgently that uh, and ur uh, urgency that we are facing, and we uh, truly never uh, before witnessed the scale of activism in artistic world in Lithuania. And it was really humbling to experience uh, all the young um, uh, uh, freelancers seeking, uh, reaching to us, uh, having in mind that they were ones who were also hitting hardest by uh, pandemic. And uh, it was really privileged to see how many volunteers were sacrificing their time during social isolation and uh, uh, getting feedback from them. Uh, they said that uh, taking social action in the project and uh, reaching out to those who are more vulnerable uh, helped them go through the crisis psychologically themselves. So this was another lesson for us uh, to learn that these links uh, are working. And short, uh, shortly, I will also uh, tell you how the stream works. So um, we um, uh, communicate daily and weekly of a program of events and workshop what is happening uh, on social media. Uh, we have daily personal contacts with newcomers, uh, with target group. Uh, and uh, reaching to them, please join, please, uh, this is a new, a new volunteer and so on. Then we have training, uh, trainings to volunteers uh, on a weekly basis and uh, daily digital support for uh, newcomers because often uh, uh, online and Zoom is new thing to them. They are uh, connecting like three or four people from one phone. So of course, uh, we need to uh, help. Uh, and uh, a little bit about um, impact. I'm sorry, it looks like my uh, presentation is stuck. So let me just check. Yeah, okay. <laughs> so a little bit uh, about impact. Uh, right after pandemic uh, started, uh, it looked like possibilities for social action and collaborative work uh, is uh, in, truly impossible. So we were very lucky that we're, uh, we could get together so many uh, advocates, activists, art practitioners uh, who were and still fighting the, the way pandemic affected this uh, community. Uh, we noticed that uh, the social link uh, and uh, links are sustainable. So people who are joining and meeting, they are communicating after that right and uh, we have new friendships established which uh, our target group is very happy reduce social isolation is uh, definitely an impact we saw and uh, uh, the last uh, thing i have to mention is that not only our target target group is empowered and have new skills uh, applicable skills uh, by the workshops and events but also our uh, practitioners and uh, volunteers. So this was my short presentation. Thank you. And I'll give now microphone to Ruta back. Uh, 
so I have a few comments uh, to you and uh, actually the uh, question uh, as you mentioned the uh, volunteers joining the stream uh, during the quarantine to help you to uh, make the online meetings so uh, what is the motivation actually of these volunteers to join your activities during the quarantine and what are your experiences of working with volunteers before the period mm -hmm. I felt that uh, I feel like pandemic itself was great motivation because people felt the need to do something. And that's why, as I said, we had volunteers before, but numbers tripled because everyone were suggest like saying what we can, can we do, how we can help. So I feel like people were, uh, were, uh, get like feeling the need to join uh, some kind of volunteering experience so we were just uh, lucky that we were visible enough in cultural community so a lot of practitioners joined and i as uh, volunteering practice activity started i feel that people got a lot from it uh, and uh, knowing different cultures, uh, seeing the people from all over the world living in Lithuania, and um, it also brings a lot of uh, joy and uh, happiness, and also, of course, uh, the good deed itself mm -hmm. is very rewarding. And uh, did you have any uh, examples of uh, practitioners uh, in other countries? Uh, in uh, around Baltic Sea region that had the same challenges or same experiences that you shared? Mm -hmm. Yes, we are co cooper uh, cooperating with Latvian NGO very closely who are working in very similar basis. And sometimes we are exchanging webinars as our target group speaks both uh, Arabic, uh, English, Russian. So sometimes we have uh, Latvians, that, um, refugees in Latvia joining us and so on. And this was unexpected impact with cross-border cooperation with our uh, neighbors uh, and um, as you uh, look through the good practices online we see that scandinavian countries uh, both and all over the europe they are engaging in very similar activities so i guess this is very grassroots and um, uh, based on needs on um, of our target group so it is not uh, surprising. Mm -hmm. And uh, could you please uh, give maybe a more detailed view of uh, what kind of uh, online activities were held uh, during the stream? Right. So our most popular events uh, were uh, theater performances for children, uh, which um, like uh, gathered 40 to 50 kids uh, at once, and they are interactive, uh, co communicating to theater performance. So we had like 15 of those already. And um, besides cultural events, we had such a, like lots of activities like uh, cooking classes where people like cooking together and uh, language lessons through creative uh, methods. And uh, we had volunteers, not only from Lithuania, but like from UK and so on, because language is not uh, an issue here. And uh, as well, uh, as I mentioned, we are very proud that few volunteers with refugee backgrounds themselves joined. So we were privileged to have Arabic speakers. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's also the thing that uh, actually, when we try to see the audiences that we had before the quarantine, and then uh, with an online uh, meetings, we now start counting either twice or three right. times bigger audiences. Was it the case for you as well? Yes, because uh, uh, words spread mouth to mouth very quickly and um, not only people living in centers, refugee centers joined, but also uh, other migrants. So when we were presenting to our funders, uh, the numbers, they were saying that this cannot be true because so many, uh, there, there are not so many refugees. <laughs> oh yeah, getting these numbers. But actually, they are all uh, with the migrant background. So, I mean, I think that even our government institutions, they did not create these links that were created accidentally because of the online uh, uh, content, like attractive online content. Okay. So, thank you so much for your presentation. And then we will move uh, further. Uh, 
uh, to uh, other part of this uh, webinar. It's uh, discussing the professional communities that were also affected by the uh, pandemic crisis during the past uh, time. And uh, as I've mentioned before, Markus Hagemann was not able to join us online, but we managed to have an, a phone call and uh, in interview uh, prepared for today. So I also, uh, UBC Cultural Cities Commission was a part of the project for two years uh, and uh, the, the project uh, Ars Baltica Creative Dialogues. So it's also the part that I will present uh, to you all. Um, so now I'll share the presentation. So uh, today uh, uh, we will talk about the Ars Baltica Creative Dialogue. It's a project that has been launched uh, in 2018 and uh, the general tagline for it is uh, empowering lasting cultural exchange grounded in shared local perspectives. Uh, so uh, the project was initiated by the Ars Baltica uh, network that is connecting the Baltic Sea states. Uh, by encouraging col cultural collaboration. So the leader of this uh, network is Markus Hagemann, and uh, he was the one who invited um, practitioners from nine different countries around the BCR to join the project uh, that actually traveled a lot, and uh, the numbers are really impressive. Uh, so the project uh, took part uh, for uh, took place for two years, and uh, actually it developed uh, during the time the 17 ABCD workshops, uh, including 200 and nearly 270 uh, partner uh, participants uh, from nine countries. So it um, these workshops actually uh, took place in different kinds of uh, cities, uh, starting with Rendsburg, Dansk, Riga, Tallinn, Stockholm, Kona, Skil, and uh, Dansk, uh, and uh, Copenhagen, Malmo, and uh, so on. Uh, so, uh, Ars Baltica is actually uh, the network that uh, since 1991 uh, has been connecting the Baltic Sea states by encouraging cultural collaboration and the power and uniqueness of Ars Baltica lie in combining cultural policy development and close collaboration with cultural operators. So created on the initiative of the Ministries of Culture of the Baltic Sea region, the network maintains tight links with the Council of the Baltic Sea States. Uh, so here's Markus himself, and today uh, uh, I think you can actually imagine him when I will uh, present you our online talk. And uh, going to this our ABCD project uh, that took part for two years already, um, Marcos himself presents the idea uh, and how and when did the idea and the need for ABCD project arise and how long did it take for the project to be implemented? Well, the ABCD project arose out of the needs that we were facing within Ars Baltica or the challenge that we saw that we were missing or lacking a format, an ongoing format that allows to gather actors of all around the Baltic Sea region regularly in a sustainable way, meaning for long term that is able to be paid and also allows to um, avoid peak performances, meaning that you gather a lot of people in one time, in one space, in one place, and not being able to do this very often because it's very expensive and it's also not very convenient in terms of travel costs, in terms of pollution and all those perspectives. And so we came up with the idea that we could um, actually come in with our stuff and our production 
budget to go into the countries and create an ongoing dialogue while gathering people on spot locally, nationally, and link them up internationally through our network. So the project in the beginning was or is designed to last beyond the first two years of funding phase, which was actually done by the PSF, Project Support Facility of the Council of Baltic Sea States. Um, this first funding allowed us to install the project within those first two years. Um, so this need was for us very urgent to have an ongoing format that brings people together. And to this is also linked um, the possibility to stay in touch beyond. So it was also the urge and the idea to not just create one-time experiences, but to further extend the possibilities that the people that met within local or national meetings can reconnect beyond this one meeting and that um, the ABCD travels around the Baltic Sea region, meaning that we can compare on same topics, different countries or different feedbacks from people and get them to be in touch. Um, that's the one very most important need and idea why the project started. And the second very important thing linked to this is also that there's ongoing changing topics, meaning there's one day or one year, there's other issues that are very urgent or important for certain countries or actors in the cultural field than in another year or another time period. So um, also this is linked to the sustainable and ongoing aspect that we wanted to have more possibility to continuously discuss different topics, knowing that we will be able to come back to the same or a similar area within the countries and and touch a background with people that might already have been participating in an earlier ABCD. Uh, so the other question uh, regarding the project uh, was who were the participants and uh, maybe uh, you can give some numbers related to the project mm -hmm. and its outcome. Well, we had about 264 participants um, in 17 ABCDs that took place in nine countries all around the Baltic Sea region. Um, mainly those participants were coming as artists and cultural practitioners, um, quite many creative CCI producers and CCI entrepreneurs and freelancers. And there were quite a lot of participants with a bureaucratic administrative as well as a political background. And this shows also the idea in terms of widespread audience that ABCD tries to follow, or at least in those first two years it was following, that we always try to um, bring together a different bunch of interesting people, participants that can reflect upon the same issues or topics to be discussed, to get different feedbacks and to being able to find um, better solutions together. Um, since the project has been running two years now, those 200, almost 270 participants are now about to be recontacted by us because two years is quite a long time. And as one main outcome, um, there will be a digital platform that shall reconnect all the participants that have been taking part so far, but also should serve as a future platform for future participants or even open up as a platform for other projects and partners to join in. All this needs to be discussed now um, with the main partners of the project, also uh, mainly with the UBC, Union of Baltic Cities, that are one partner within the project. And we are happy to see and connect to the feedback maybe by the cities within the network um, to follow up on the results and hopefully develop further. And um, that's the beautiful part of the project. It's ongoingly growing so we can augment the participants and connect them also to the participants that have been taking part before and create together new 
events, ABCDs and workshops. Uh, so what was the main and most important outcome of the ABCD and how do you think you've, uh, it corresponds to the nowadays reality? I would say the main and most important outcome of the ABCD project so far is that um, we have created a format that allows to continuously keep in dialogue and keep the cultural dialogue going and connect players around the Baltic Sea region beyond live meetings or big live meetings, meaning that um, it is a format that is not very expensive and doesn't need a lot of beforehand logistic planning, at least now that we know how it can be run. And so that's what the first main outcome that this is something that is built for the future and not just a project that has start a starting point and an ending point. So I would say it's a work in progress, which is implemented in its first step now and can be continued and used. And the second main outcome probably is that the people have, who have taken part is are reconnecting or have the possibility to reconnect amongst each other on a long run. So it's not just about meeting once in such a workshop and discussing life, but also scaling up on a digital level all around the Baltic Sea region and this in a as much as possible sustainable way. So it's not always about flying around to meet. It's about connecting very precisely for not such a long time, but to discuss um, urgent and interesting topics. Um, as a very strong side effect that we had underestimated or not have been have not been thinking so much about in the first place was also the 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 fact that quite many partners have found together. So it's not only about the participants on or within the workshops, but it's strongly also the organizers and partners that are joining force that are all players and intermediaries around the Baltic Sea region that are continuously or should continuously work together. And we have found out that this outcome, which wasn't defined in the first application or in the main application for the project as an outcome was one that we really see as a strong one because it keeps our ties very close and and all partners can feed in needs and ideas and especially topics that they or we would like to discuss and since there's always more than one topic it allows also to um, cover more topics than one so it's not necessarily off table if we choose one topic for the one workshop because there can be more than one workshop done in the future so i would say in generally if i um, bring it down to one point it's the flexibility and the sustainable aspect of the project and the bottom-up approach meaning that um, everybody's welcome and it's not a closed event but it's a small beautiful thing that can be or is upscaled in a whole big region like the Baltic Sea region and can be used. It's about the participants, it's about the people in the region and it's about keeping the dialogue going. And now I'd like to present a small overview or video reflection on the project. Thank you. 
materializes through a project like ABCD is not the, the, the top-down political idea of a union or an identity. It's the bottom-up sense of belonging to a common region. As we talked with Marcus, that uh, actually uh, the initial uh, idea of the project was uh, five workshops connecting five people, but uh, there was a very logical outcome of the project, uh, the digital platform. So uh, this is what we are talking with Marcus about, uh, that one of the parts of the project was creating a digital platform as a tool for the future collaboration of the cultural professionals. So how does it work and what are the perspectives in developing the tool? One main outcome of the ABCD project is a digital platform. Uh, we also call it our community that allows to connect all people digitally. And this platform is um, ready programmed and will be up running after summer and the idea of this um, platform is that people can get their profiles everybody who has participated in the ABCD um, has no profile can put information about him herself into this um, profile and share it with the other partners or not partners participants so this allows us that the people that locally meet on certain aspects, questions and topics can connect and reconnect internationally and either in terms of finding partners for other projects or connecting up on uh, interest, personal interest or just seeing who is around or with whom um, it might be interesting to keep on the going dialogue beyond the ABCDs. Um, this platform has as a basic feature now this possibility to have your own profile as one part and the other part is a social media um, or a forum-like um, possibility to interconnect between the participants and people joining the platform. We have created in the beginning this digital platform was not in the core focus of the project. It was just as something we believed is sensible in accompan accompanying the project and reconnecting beyond um, the live workshops. Now with COVID-19 and everything that has happened over the last couple of months, we realized how important and how urgent and uh, needed such a platform might be. And so we pushed it a bit further and we are developing it now also as a probably open community or at least the possibility as an open community f around the Baltic Sea region for cultural practitioners and all the different kinds of people participating in the ABCDs to join forces, to interconnect, to stay in touch and to keep the dialogue going. And we believe it's um, a possibility to cross borders without maybe um, being restricted in the ways we are probably now and for the future. It also allows us to rethink um, perhaps the way we are collaborating because as an outcome of the project, we also see that it's not always necessary um, to, to meet in such a high extent um, live. Um, probably it helps us a lot if we stay in touch ongoingly and discuss things in this format and then maybe if needed can grow a live event out of such um, interconnection on a digital level. So this is an outcome that is, has become very, very important for us and uh, it shows hopefully also the future that it's 
um, up running and it depends on the people participating and interacting. We for now play the role and take um, proactive um, um, the proactive part to create the profile of the already pe the people that have already participated are the 264 people. So for them, for those participants, we are creating the profile as for the future participants, they all can um, get the possibility to log in and register and create their own profile. All this is um, under final development and needs some um, final adjustments, but the platform so far is ready and um, we are looking forward to continuing bringing people together and inviting people from around the Baltic Sea region to join in. Uh, so these are a few screenshots uh, from the uh, online platform that will be uh, presented in a few months period uh, that the practitioners around the BCR could join. So as Marcus had mentioned before, the, there will be a possibility to create your personal profile as a cultural practitioner and to share it uh, for the connection needs. So uh, finally, uh, how people can join and contribute to the project or the platform. Well, people can join and contribute in many different ways um, and the main way to do so is to get in touch with us or with some one of the partners that can be found on the Ars Baltica website under the project ABCD um, to offer a space or collaboration to run an ABCD whether it is a, a digital version which we are now developing or have developed or whether it be a live version where people meet up all this can be discussed and uh, we can run such a format together. We are open for all proposals. We only have to see how many of those possible events we can run per year. And um, But since the future is long, I suppose there's always space to do so. On another level to reconnect or to get in touch or involved is to join the community um, we have not yet so well defined whether um, people that have not participated within the ABCDs can openly join into the community. But if the interest is there, just get in touch with me or um, my colleagues in Ars Baltica and we can see what is possible. But generally speaking, the platform is open and it's all about getting in touch and communicating. So you find our contacts on the website, on our Ars Baltica website, and which is soon going to be a new one. So the one you find right now is the actual old one, but the contacts are all there. And so that's the way to get in touch. And you can do this also through all other partners that have been involved within the project. Looking forward to hearing the one or the other idea flying in and we are open for collaborating. So, and uh, uh, overviewing this whole project in terms of personal experience, uh, I've asked Marcus what are the biggest challenges that he has faced in carrying out activities and uh, does he think that one can prepare for these challenges in advance? For the biggest challenges that we have been facing uh, in bringing those activities into life, um, it's probably always, at least in my experience, it's always about starting something. And afterwards, when you've been doing it, you are more, you know more than before. So in the beginning, we had quite some difficulties to set up the logistics, finding the right partners and venues and uh, bringing everything together and we underestimated that on the one side and on the other side it was just uh, I would say also an experience we had to collect so um, this is now there and uh, we know more or less how we can set up and run the format but this challenge um, was quite a big in the beginning and then second one 
was due to the long time we've been running the project, also prolongation we um, got due to um, the logistic and also the um, finding of the right time and space to run certain ABCDs. The time has uh, been quite long, so uh, another um, challenge that I've been mentioning before also linked to uh, the digital platform was to reconnect the people that have already been taking part over those two years. So not to lose them uh, since the digital platform only will be existing now and can be used from um, this after this summer on. So this is another challenge we were or are facing to really keep the people that have been participating in the boat and um, um, even sometimes get them back in, which we don't see as a problem, but it needs to be done. So all this needs a regular follow-up and we have learned that we can solve this by working well together with the partners. So the future aim will be to really spread and share those activities needed and also the actions needed amongst the partners. And communication, 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 that's <laughs> the main thing to be done to have success with such things. So to avoid maybe future difficulties for such project activities, it's probably good to augment um, the communication flow and to be very clear who is responsible for what and to share those perspectives well ahead. On the other side, I'm, I know I've been running or we have been running quite many projects and every time it's different, so you can't generalize uh, such aspects and probably every time you find something new that we will need to solve. So I would say if something is convincing, just go for it and install it and uh, we have to just follow up those paths and learn from each other. And this part, ABCD is a good format to also exchange those learnings and good practices as many other partners have great formats. I know and we should all keep them ongoing to being able to learn more and more and to continue on to collaborate because uh, the Baltic Sea region from our perspective is a region that needs the interaction between the countries and even more now in the COVID-19 times that culture seems to maybe getting lost which I don't believe it's just about us to create the right formats to keep going and having a strong culture as a backbone of society. Thank you very much and bye-bye. Uh, so there's a short information uh, of the ABCD project that could be reached on ArsBaltica.net uh, 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 website and the contact person for it is Markus Hagemann that we have uh, heard just recently. Um, so coming back to Aista, uh, do we have Aista with us? Yes, I'm here. Just yeah. Uh, yeah. yeah, so I would uh, like to give you some questions uh, regarding your presentation and uh, the one that Marcus gave. Mm -hmm. uh, so it seems that during a quarantine period, the inner and outer communication of cultural projects was transferred mainly to digital platforms. Uh, on one hand, the they become the only means of the communication and collaboration. On the other hand, they have created even more distance than ever before and excluded people who are usually are not used to connect, connecting digitally. So how do you think does staying connected always means staying digital and uh, are there any uh, alternative needed? Uh, yes, uh, thank you for the question. I think that we are, as everyone suffered uh, with the consequence that we need, needed to communicate through this noise of digital information uh, online because everything you do there, you, you're competing with so many events and uh, press releases and so on. So uh, uh, yes, it is harder. It was. Uh, it is a challenge to communicate uh, about our activities and um, mission online. But uh, what we noticed and strategy that we um, uh, are trying to implement is 
by closer co uh, collaborating with our local partners who already have their channels, like uh, in communities, for example, cultural centers, organizations in Konas, and so on. So with um, close cooperation and um, then echoing each other messages with organizations that you are working together, for us, this was productive and effective. So um, this is again about collaboration, collaboration, collaboration during this crisis, but I think that this, that works. Yeah, I, I really would add up to it because I think that if there are any possible communication platforms or tools, we can really uh, get use of it. And uh, it's also the case with the uh, presentation of Marcus, as you've seen before, it was just uh, very simple to just call and have a talk uh, on the topic and also um, uh, in Kona's Artist House, we have this project uh, uh, dedicated to senior people uh, and their involvement into culture. So, and uh, it seemed that during the pro project, um, the most convenient way to communicate and to transfer information was actually sending SMS uh, to the people who don't use internet uh, that much. Mm -hmm. uh, so, and uh, my last question to you would be that, um, uh, how do you think what quarantine and its restrictions mean to different communities and their sustainability and uh, how has this issue been addressed on the international or local policy making level and uh, how do you think what measures did you and your audiences uh, is directly that you really felt? Uh... Mm -hmm. I think that um... Uh, pandemic uh, really showed the importance of uh, resilience that uh, communities have to have and um, we saw that communities who are uh, creative, adaptive, uh, they are more resilient to negative consequences of everything and uh, I think that um, uh, this um, discovery really is important and uh, internationally we uh, didn't feel any measures yet uh, going forward it i think it's uh, too early uh, to speak about it but i feel that uh, locally uh, uh, government and the uh, uh, and the instruments uh, financial instruments uh, going into communities are now uh, more and more flexible and understanding that uh, this is where uh, uh, money and the efforts and activities have to go is uh, present, is here. Mm -hmm. Thank you so much uh, on your uh, comments and answers. Uh, I actually uh, don't see any comments or questions from the audience. So uh, I just uh, keep reminding that uh, actually you have this possibility to comment or share your views or personal experiences. And as we have also the final part of uh, our uh, webinar, it's um, <clears throat> welcoming Anton Zaitsev. Uh, he uh, jumped into our webinar just uh, really freshly, but he's a PR manager at Green Games Baltic Cup 2020 that actually will take place in St. Petersburg on 19th of September. And uh, Clean Games is a team-based cleanup competition. So it's a really very interesting and intriguing format and in which participants gain points for collecting and sorting waste and it works by engaging the local communities. Anton is now uh, willing to announce an open call and invitation for partners to join uh, this uh, format. So uh, Anton, the floor, is, the floor is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you for invitation to this webinar. Um, uh, yes, as we just said, um, we engage local communities and raise awareness about ecology by running ecological tournaments and we call them uh, Clean Games and I will uh, talk a little bit about the format itself and then I will announce uh, the Baltic Cup uh, on, on the 19th of September. Uh, let me share my screen. Okay, so what is Clean Games? Uh, a lot of people collecting litter 
and certain wastes and they they compete in that activity and a whole event uh, is more like a festival on an open air festival with music host some fun activities a picnic and so on so it's it, it's a easy way to enter the whole um the whole topic of ecology uh, it's a fun way to uh, to start think about difficult stuff actually uh, and at the same time it's fun it, it's and it in, at the same time it has a real impact uh, first of all we make green areas and costs cleaner collecting up to five tons of litter per event and the most important part that we inspire a wide audience to embrace ecological habits in everyday life. So the main victory is not in the field, but in in your head. Um, every event has a lot of activities. They include sport activities, intellectual board games, creative workshops, and so on. And we have a mobile app for participants to check their scores online and share photos with geolocation tags. Uh, so you can see how it's going online to see, and you can see uh, how, how good is uh, your score, how good is uh, score of our participant and, to and you can compare them. In the Baltic Sea region, we have some partners, including UBC, and we are looking, we are always looking for new partners to attract as many potential organizers for our events as possible. Right now, our games has been run uh, in 17 countries across the globe since 2014. Mm, about 700 games with more than 1,000 tons of uh, litter collected. And last year we made the Clean Games Baltic Cup. It was held in six countries of the Baltic Sea Basin. And this year on the uh, 19th of September, we want to make another one. We will make the Clean Games Baltic Cup 2020. And with, with the COVID-19 situation, uh, we, we had to adapt a methodology to this new world that challenged us with social distance rules and everything. We tested uh, this new format in different cities already. Um, the, the, the point is that participants start in different places across the whole Baltic region. They don't gather in big groups. Uh, and in the end, it's not a festival, unfortunately. But we can be together online. So we use chats, our mobile, mobile app, and live broadcasts to create a joint experience. And right now, we're looking for organizers who will take part in the Baltic Cup. An, an, an organizer is an active person who can gather up to 30 people and coordinate them in order to host the game using our methodology. Um, our methodology is being distributed for free. We teach all our organizers. And in August 2020, we will host a few webinars dedicated um, to the new format of the Clean Games and the upcoming event, the Clean Games Baltic Cup, on the 19th of September. And the first, the first webinar will be held on the 10th of August at 5 p.m. Um, Central European time. For the presentation, that's it. Uh, I just showed the contact information. Uh, and I would be happy to uh, to have some some feedback from listeners 
and thank you for for listening for taking part in this webinar uh, it was pleasure for me also to uh, listen to other uh, speakers uh, we have a great topic of uh, networking in the new world of uh, after the pandemic uh, it's good to see that we can make uh, build these bridges so uh, I'm open for questions about clean games and the clean games about the cup. Thank you, Anton. Uh, so I would like to ask, uh, so specifically uh, regarding this year, actually, uh, what yeah. uh, uh, what is um, how the live formats of the games are to be uh, secured and how uh, will it be uh, proceeded? Okay, so uh, in the classic format, we have a few hundreds of participants in one place. They start at the same time. Uh, it's it's a mass event by design uh, because this joint experience is very powerful. Uh, and in in the new format, uh, it's the opposite. Um, all the participants gather in small groups uh, they gather with people they live uh, with uh, on everyday basis like you can gather with your family or close friends or colleagues um, you can gather in a group of four people for example and um, these small groups these teams they are gathered um, in a in a in a in some in some location in the Baltic Sea region, and they don't uh, uh, they don't gather to they, they don't uh, um, meet each other in in one place. They play in different spots in this area, and the whole area um, consists of thirty players maximum. So our goal right now is not. Um, is not to run a big event in a big city, but we want to have a lot of mini games across the whole region with uh, a lot of organizers who can uh, gather these people to play. And for them, it's easier than uh, than before because you you don't need to to build this little infrastructure with music, uh, logistics, and everything. You just need to gather people and uh, coordinate them. Uh, so it's easier for organizers for potential organizers and uh, and another another point is that we start in different time uh usually the game uh, lasts for one hour for, for example and different teams they start with some interval like uh, uh, if they need if they need to get something uh, at the uh, centralized um, some some uh, some headquarters of the game. They need to get something there. They uh, go there, but the next team will go uh, after five minutes to this place to get uh, gloves, for example, and uh, bags for for later. Uh, that's how how it is. Mm -hmm. And so uh, it means that uh, the local organizers uh, can be. Uh, also uh, NGOs, it could be municipal institutions, as I suppose, and their uh, main responsibilities would be to communicate uh, the Baltic Cup games and also to uh, help uh, build uh, the, uh, to, to provide the ga gamers with the information about the process. Yeah, yeah, yeah. For, for who are our people? Uh, organizer is, a, is an active person um, and it could be a member uh, of YAF organization, environmental organization, it could be civil worker uh, from municipality or city administration, it could be a teacher, um, any, any person that works with YAF, um, and could be just, just an activist um, doing it by himself. And we, we know a lot of examples when our games uh, inspired people to start their own projects. So yeah, and for them, uh, these games 
are the opportunity to to start building um, their networks, to start uh, building uh, connections with uh, different organizations in their area, to attract governmental or uh, commercial support, and make these events on a regular basis and engage their local communities and teach them about ecological and sustain sustainability problems in their area. Um, and this tool is very powerful because uh, it has it has so much fun in it. It's, it's, a, it's a game for very wide audience. You don't need to be an activist to play the game, but you need to be an activist uh, to organize the game. You need to have motivation for that. So we, we, we are looking for these motivated people uh, that want to talk about these problems to you know, the um, local communities. Thank you so much. Uh, so uh, yeah, it seems that today actually uh, we, we still have uh, some challenges in sustaining cultural exchange and cultural mobility in the times of the uh, the COVID pandemia, but uh, nevertheless, uh, we see that there's a big variety of um, tools and uh, forms of communication and collaboration in between the countries. Um, today, we had really three very different mm -hmm. but really inspiring stories and invitations uh, to join uh, projects all over the Baltic Sea region. And I really am thankful to today's presenters, Aistin Lepe, Anton Zaitsev, and also Markus Hagenan, who was recorded uh, for today's uh, webinar. But still, it seems uh, uh, that uh, the situation, however, is changing rapidly and every day. And it's really nice to know that our community of uh, cultural practitioners is really big uh, and collaborative. Uh, so, at, regarding the third uh, event in a series of uh, UBC Cultural Studies Commission webinars, I would like to remind you about the upcoming one that will take place in September. Uh, so, now I would like to just shortly uh, share my screen to you. That uh, in September 8, uh, 2020, uh, the exact time at 10 CET, uh, there will be a webinar uh, that, uh, with a topic changing habits from cultural creation to participation. And uh, about a half year after the introduction of quarantine restrictions in Europe, uh, can we measure the impact on individual artists and cultural operators? And what measures have been taken to maintain their work? How do habits change in creative processes and in the ways of participation or consumption? Uh, so this third webinar is open to the presentations from all over the CR region. And uh, the open call is still uh, valid until 7th of August 2020. So everyone really can join uh, and present their cases uh, up to five, 10 minutes each. Uh, on the uh, topic. Uh, so the submissions, uh, just a, a letter with a topic uh, and it's uh, abstract up to 1000 uh, words, uh, uh, characters, I'm sorry, uh, can be sent to me directly uh, by the given uh, email address. Uh, so, so I would like to thank you all once again and um, I see that Anton really posted the reminder about uh, the Clean Games Baltic Cup and uh, the webinar that will uh, take place on 10th of August, uh, 5 p.m. CET. Uh, so thank you once again to you all and uh, I really hope you will have a wonderful day. Uh, so uh, thank you to the UBC Secretariat and for helping this uh, webinar. Uh, to take place today and uh, stay tuned for the uh, www.ubc.net for more details and uh, the information about the web upcoming webinars.
Yes, thank you, Rota, on my behalf as well and on behalf of the whole UBC. So thank you very much to all the speakers and participants in, in this very interesting webinar. And as Rota already said, so looking forward to see you in the next webinar in September. And, and stay tuned for more details on our website. Thank you again and have a great day.